So we've been on quite a journey as we've gone through the tractate of Yuvamot. And we began by essentially defining the essence of marriage, defining permitted and forbidden relationships within marriage. And then gradually we went through to the process of Yibum itself, of leveret marriage, which of course depends on the, the death, the childless death of the husband. And so from there we progressed to questions about truth and evidence. To what extent can we accept evidence that the husband has died? Can we take, and of course, what is crucial, given that we're in the beginning, the introduction of the Seder of Nashim, of the order of women, do we accept evidence from women? And in general, in the tractate of, uh, in the order of Nazikin, in the, the in monetary cause, we don't accept women evidence from women but it seems that here in the tractate of nashim the mishnah is keen to ex to establish the principle that in fact we do accept evidence from women and in fact even from one woman and the mishnah is going to close now we're at the end of the 16th chapter the mishnah is gonna, now going to close with a, a long anecdote and a dis subsequent discussion which seems to focus back down on the question of evidence and the reliability of female evidence um, in um, uh, in allowing a, a, a possibly a chained woman to remarry. So it's a very interesting way to end. And we begin with a story. We're going to see here different voices, different opinions from Rabbi Akiva. But we begin with a story from Rabbi Akiva when he's in Babylon. So it sounds, and we think about Rabbi Akiva as a sage of the land of Israel. But here he is in, um, here he's in Babylon. It seems, by the way, he can't come back to the land of Israel. So we're clearly in the revolt. I mean, we know he's a political figure. We know that Rabbi Akiva is eventually going to be killed by the Romans. But at this point, it seems that he's taking refuge from the Romans in Babylon. And he says, Amar Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Akiva said, Nehardea. When I went down to Nehardea, Nehardea is one of the places where there was a Jewish academy. So I went down to Nehardea, to inter intercalate the year. So we need a bet din to intercalate the year. We need a bet din of Chachamim to establish that you know, just as this year, there's going to be two, two Adars. There are going to be Adar, Rishon, Adar, Sheni. We need a Bet Din of Chachamim. He's gone down to Nardia to intercalate the year. Matza'ani, Nechemia, Ish, Beit, Dili. I met this guy called Nechemia of Beit, Dili. Amarli, he said to me, Shamati, She'ein, Masi'in, Et Ha'ishab, Eretz, Yisrael, Alpi, Ed, Echa. Eila, Yudah ben Baba. I heard that in the land of Israel, no one permits a woman to marry again on the evidence of one witness except Rabbi Yudah ben Baba. And we've seen, by the way, Rabbi Yudah ben Baba, we've seen his judgments right the way through this tracting. Nun tilo. Nun is the Aramaic for the Hebrew word nu'um, which were, means word. Nun tilo, I, or sorry, numetilo. I said to him, this is Rabbi Akiva speaking. Numetilo, Cain Hadvarim. That is so. Amarle, he said to me, Lech ve'emor lahen mishmi, go and tell him in my name. Tem yodim shehamadina hazot mushubeshet bigiasot. You know this country is in confusion because of, hmm, giasot is translated as marauders by safari. It could also be um, troops, actually, it could be troops. The country's all, it, it's in a state. No one can travel anywhere, effectively. So he's passing a message. I've received a tradition from Rabban Gamliel Hazaken. This is Rabban Gamliel, um, who lives in, this is Rabban Gamliel, who was at, active before the destruction of the temple. So he's the grandfather of Rabban Gamliel of Yavne. 
I've received tradition from Rabbi Gamliel, the elder, Hazaken, that they allow a woman to remarry on the evidence of one witness. So Rabban Gamliel, the elder, two generations before Rabban Gamliel of Yavne and, and before Rabbi Akiva, seems to have this, this opinion. How is it, by the way, that Rabban Gamliel, his grandson, doesn't know? We're not sure, but we're going to find out. And when I came and I, I lecture, actually, in modern Hebrew, means to give a lecture. Anyway, I recounted the words before Rabban Gamliel. We're now talking about Rabban Gamliel of Yavne. So this is Rabban Gamliel right after the destruction of the temple. He knew Jerusalem before the temple was destroyed, but he exits after Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai. He goes to Yavne. He takes over the stewardship of the Bet Din from Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai. He's the grandson of Rabban Gamliel, the elder. So I came and I said all these words before Rabban Gamliel. Samach Lidvarai. He was so happy when he heard my words. Clearly, he hadn't learned this from his granddad. The Amar Matsinu Chaver Yuda ben Baba. We found a Chaver. We found a friend for Rabbi Yuda ben Baba. So we found someone to follow to to agree with him. So maybe we can rule this. And in fact, we do. Mitoch Advarim. Now it gets even more interesting. We're really seeing the life of the bait of the bait midrash now. Mitoch Advarim. In the conversation, Niskar Rabban Gamliel Shinerag Harugim Betel Arza. Rabban Gamliel remembered that some people were killed once in Tel Arza. But he see Rabban Gamliel has a kenet it neshotehem al pi edechad, and Rabban Gamliel the elder, his granddad, had allowed their wives to marry on the evidence of one witness. So now we have a second witness to this opinion. And it was a zaku, and it was established. So now we're going to establish the halacha. So it was established. Liot masin ed mi pi ed mi pi isha, isha mi pi isha, mi pi eved u mi pi shifcha. It was established that a woman marries on the evidence of one witness on the evidence of a witness from another witness. This is the hearsay. We learned about this in, these, in this chapter. On the evidence um, from, from a slave. Um, sorry, me uh, pi ed. Me pi esh, sorry, masi'in me pi ed. We marry on one, on one witness. Me pi isha, on the evidence of a woman. Isha me pi isha, a woman speaking on behalf of another woman. Mi pi evid, on the basis of a slave. U mi pi shifcha, or from a maid servant. So all of these, all of these are acceptable. And by the way, the Mishnah, the Mishnah emphasizes that these are all women. We seem to be accepting here female evidence, even down to a slave, a slave girl. And we will have some disagreement now. Rabbi, Rabbi Eliezer, Rabbi Yeshua, Omrim, Ein Masim et Isha al pi edechad. Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Yeshua say a woman isn't allowed to remarry on the basis of one witness. And by the way, Rabbi Eliezer, well, we know Rabbi Eliezer doesn't want to do anything with learning. And Rabbi Eliezer doesn't have a lot of respect, actually, for women's intellect. Whether this is connected, I don't know. And now we have a different opinion from Rabbi Akiva. So we seem to be now, if you like, in the in the in the Mishnah, and we're out of this little anecdote that we just heard. Rabbi Akiva Omer, Lo al pi isha velo al pi akrovim. Rabbi Akiva says not on the evidence of a woman or on evidence of relatives. This is obviously not the woman who's married. We know that a woman can get evidence about her own husband. So this is, seems to be some other woman. So they say back to him, I'm ruler. Now, so now we're in the Beit Midrash. We're not in front of Rabban Gamliel anymore. We're in the Beit Midrash somehow with Rabbi Akiv. I'm ruler. It happened that a bunch of Le Leviim went to Tsoar, the city of Palm. Tsoar is down by the Dead Sea. So it's, it's really, really hot and there is enough water. You can grow, you can still grow really great palms there. You just go to Jericho. You'll see the palms. Soar is not far from Jericho. 
So these Levim, they went down to Tzohar HaTzmarim, Tzohar of Palms, one of them got sick on the way, and they left him in a pub or in an inn. And when they came back, they asked the inn mistress, the Pundakit, the female innkeeper. They asked the inn mistress, Ayin, Chabarenu, where's our friend? Venumat lahen, and she said to him, we're using the, exact, the same word, the same Aramaic verb, num, to mean speaking. Inter very interesting, twice in this Mishnah. It's quite a reasonably rare way of saying speaking, but it's twice in this Mishnah. Venumat lahen, she said to him, mate ukvartiv, he died, and I buried him. That's really interesting. He died and I buried him. So, by the way, there's no evidence of his body. We can't identify the body because he's buried. All the identification issues that we've just discussed in the previous mission, now, they all come up. He's buried. There's no body available. But, but they let his wife remarry. So the evidence we're not talking about a female slave here, but a female innkeeper. And it, I mean, nowadays, innkeepers don't have the best of reputation. Possibly then as well. So I, I, I think it's, it's very interesting that we seem to be taking examples from the kind of the bottom reaches of society. On the evidence of the female innkeeper, we allowed his wife to remarry. Okay. The, they don't agree in the Beit Midrash. I'm Rulo. Love to hate an enemy. They, they 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 said to him they said to him in other words backing up this story shouldn't the wife of a kohen be treated at least as well as an innkeeper's wife as a as an inmistress so amar lahan this is rabbi akiv and he's going to have the last word he's going to have the last word in the masechet and i I'm not quite sure why or what this teaches us. Amar lahem. A priest's wife will be believed like an inmistress when the inmistress is believed. So he's saying, oh God, we don't believe all inmistresses. Somehow this one we do. Af hapundakit hotsialahen maklo uman alo so this particular inn mistress brought out to them his staff, his shoes, his bag, and the Torah scroll that he had with him. So this seems to be kind of some, quite some inn mistress, actually. And the last we hear of her is actually that She's bringing out a Sefer Torah. There is something amazing, actually, about the inmistress actually holding the Sefer Torah that belonged to this lady. And that's how we close the Tractate of Yuvamot with the, the female innkeeper holding a Sefer Torah. It's an image which is quite unlike, quite unlike any image we ever have of a female innkeeper, either in Britain or in the United States. Hadranala, Masechet Yevamot, Vehadrach Alan. We will return to you, Masechet Yevamot, and you will return to us. Da Tan Alach, Masechet Yevamot, Veta Tach Alan. Our mind is on you, Masechet Yevamot, and your mind is on us. Lo nit nashem inach, Masechet Yevamot, ve lo tit nashem minach. We will not forget you, Masechet Yivamot, and you will not forget us. Lo ba'alma hadain ve lo ba'almad ati. Not in this world and not in the world to come.